So what can you tell us about season two? <laughs> Well, we can tell you there's a new character. Yeah. This one. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> it's a little loopy. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I'm... This new character named Paz is introduced. And he is a um, fellow uh, psychic who hears things. But does he really? We don't know. Like, is he, is he, is he really hearing things? able to help people, he's a guru, he has followers, um, and he sort of comes into Charlie's world uh, to help him. Actually, your character introduces me to Charlie, and, uh, to help him, to antagonize him, to complicate his life, push him in directions that he maybe is not comfortable with. Uh, and then, so that, that creates a, a lot of tension in the show this season. And we were saying earlier that this year they have peeled back the onion of the characters a bit, so we're learning more about their pasts and why they are the way they are, which is super interesting, I think. Um, it's one of yeah. my favorite parts about the show this year. Yeah. It's really fun. I like Charlie. Yeah, Charlie and Linda's past and what made them like the way they are. Which I think... Can we get into your past? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. A little bit. Not so much in flashbacks, but in story. There's a whole thing of my past. Yeah, like, uh, a whole thing of, like, I was like, I missed that. Starting in the slums of India. Shot in Hollywood. <laughs> you didn't go to India. To shoot. <laughs> it's all shot in Valencia, California. <laughs> Lovely Valencia. <laughs> yeah. uh, what do you think is the, uh, the enduring appeal of uh, like psychic, psychic power? What do I think? What's the? Why do you think there's always been this appeal we have with the? You know, Psychic oh, of psychic abilities? Like that. Because I think we have a, a we have a, a quest to know. You know, we we, we want to know. I mean, it goes back to the same thing as my religion and all of it. You know, like what are we doing here? Why are we here? Is there an answer? Does somebody have an answer? Can somebody tell me what's going to happen, please? Yeah. You know. And I think I tap into the. Do we use three percent of our brain or something? That's not really small. true. Yeah, is it like, much? <laughs> <laughs> no, they say that we use only like five or fifteen percent of our brain, but I think that's been debunked. No, no, it has been. Yeah. Has it been debunked? It was just a made up, made up not notion. It was, it's not a scientific. I've been holding on to the whole thing, like maybe that's the other. You know, yeah, yeah. No, but there is a we won't there is tell a lot anybody. about brain that we don't understand. Keep it with us. Well, there's a lot of the brain that we don't understand. Like, yeah. There are things. I mean, if you talk to people who have had traumatic brain injuries yeah, sure. or you know that you know the, the crazy things like there are people who this is a true thing there are people who can taste colors yes yeah, there are people who can oh thank you there are people who can taste colors there are people who can yeah, synesthesia. Like, uh, uh, synesthesia. Uh, they, they can they can do mathematical equations large mathematical equations uh, because they see numbers as patterns and colors and they can match patterns so there are all these things we don't understand our brain at all like the, the capacity that our brain has to you know there's a a story of a, of, of a, a man who was born blind uh, and he can do he can paint he's a painter and he can paint in three dimensions having never seen three That's dimensions so cool. by touching some right so he can touch a building and then paint it into now that you go okay well how does the point how does our brain understand what dimensions are when it's you know so like there's a lot of our stuff about it. so this goes back to why are we obsessed with this world and these and this thing because it's you know it, it, why not like it's it's, it's it's like we don't understand a lot about our existence so you know and it makes a great TV show. Yeah, yeah. It makes a great idea for a TV show. It's true. Complete side note, I love your shirt. Oh, thank you. We totally love right? the shirt. Thank it's you. awesome. This is, this is how we all feel ever. right now. Yes. We're all just sitting in the lotus position. It's perfect. Yeah, we're <laughs> yeah. Just like in England, what's that? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Well, you have your own lotus position right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stiff up a lip and all that. Yeah, <laughs> we're all doing that. Hanging in there. What drives Nora in her quest to help Charlie? Is it like a search for truth or is it something more personal? I 
think it's something more personal, which you'll learn in season two, actually speaking of the past. But I also think that there is, I am personally infinitely interested in the brain and why things are the way they are. And I think uh, I share that with her. One of the few things I share with her that I do. Um, what drew you guys to the show? Like, I mean, we were talking about how, you know, it's, it's an interesting idea for a show, but what drew you guys to, like, the, the show and the character? Uh, they called me and they said, hey, and we'd like to <laughs> offer you a really nice role on the show. And you're like, sign and me. I was like, yeah, <laughs> all right. Let me see. Okay. <laughs> no, I, 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 they, they, they were very nice to call me. They invited me to be on the show, and then I uh, met the show and I watched the pilot from season one, and I thought, oh, this is an interesting world, and it's an interesting character to play. It was something that I hadn't done before, that I have People often, a lot of people know me from comedy, and, you know, but I've also done a lot of drama, so it was nice for me to yeah, get into kind of a dramatic role, and sort of get to do some fun stuff with that. And for me, it was the writing. Like, I was really in love with the language that Nora, she has a very circuitous way of getting to a point sometimes, and I loved that, and I never played a novelist, and I feel like I've run the gamut in terms of what I've played, so it was fun. fun. <laughs> I don't know, what is that? It's like, it's like one of those old tape decks. It's an actual an iPhone. <laughs> but do you hit the actual thing here? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I love that. Does it make a sound? No. Oh, it should. <laughs> right? It make it make a sound. Oh, God, that is so cool. <laughs> it is cool. I don't know why it's like... <laughs> Nobody here at Comic Con even knows what that is. No, no. Well, like, what is that strange thing on your? That, that yeah. thing? Why do they also so. think that records are new? So you know, <laughs> it's a whole new thing. <laughs> records are back. Yeah, Marvel yeah, actually like has new. like I vinyl records at the booth, and I'm like, sorry, one last question. From before. Does anybody right. have a question? New, brand new, like they just came out with this thing right. called they're a record. Right. They're when I heard someone them. like that, I had a collection that was passed down from my mom and dad and stuff oh, from like the '60s and stuff. They looked at me and they're like, are these re-releases? And I just looked at them like, no, they're new. They're, I'm like, they're old. And they're, they're looking the and they go, yeah, originals. And they go, there was records back then? Oh, I was, and I was no. like, I was, have you not said, said that to One me. of my actual friends, actually, which is, yeah. And I was like, you live under a rock. Yeah. She lives in Kansas City, so. Okay. <laughs> it's yeah. A little right. weird. <laughs> What's been your favorite moments of seeing that in season two? What's been your favorite moment? Favorite yeah. favorite moments. Which one your favorite moment? Stand up moment. Um, it is. You know, uh, I, I really have enjoyed um, spending so much time without my shirt on. <laughs> Usually something that I get to do on camera. Like people don't hire me to take my shirt off. I'm not like that guy, you know? And in this scene, they're like, you'll be taking your shirt off. And this scene, like, shirtless again. And I'm like, oh my god. So, like, so that was that was fun. But you know what? Yeah, he's like, see the hard time in wardrobe, I can tell. He's kind of hanging in the show, <laughs> except <laughs> not anywhere near his good body. You know, it's weird you just say that because I was going to say my favorite part of the season has been seeing you without a shirt on. So there you have it. We're a good team, you and I. <laughs> I know. That was my favorite part of the season. I was like, can you, you take your shirt off right now? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, you know, here's a little tidbit. I. So Jeffrey Donovan and I actually worked together in 1994 on a book understudies at Lincoln Center in a play called Suburbia by Eric Bogosian. And we had not worked together since then. And so it was kind of fun to, um, to work with Jeffrey again after a million years. How did you find out about that? How did I find him? I just turned left off. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know, he's the same. I, I didn't like him back then, and I still don't like him. <laughs> he's the same. Thank you.